India, a nation of 1.4 billion people, which is obsessed with only three things: movies, politics, and cricket. In such a scenario, science took the center stage of attention for the first time on August 23, 2023, where a live stream of Chandrayaan was seen by a shocking 8 million concurrent viewers. This also marks the highest viewership in YouTube history. The men behind the program became overnight celebrities, touring across all educational institutions in the country. Maybe now, a child from a government school in a remote village in India would not want to be a Dhoni or an SRK anymore. He may see himself as a Somnath or a Keshavan. So, sapiens, here we ask. is science starting to take a center stage in the most populous country in the world to answer this question let us first go back in time to august 15 1947 india got its independence from the colonial rule of british and many countries got their independence in the next 5 years pakistan israel myanmar Libya and Sri Lanka in 2023 two countries are under economic meltdown two countries are busy in developing defense technology meanwhile libya is making serious efforts to acquire a remote sensing satellite which india had done way past in 1988 a natural doubt can arise in our mind who is responsible for such a remarkable development in space sector the answer is complex for starters we were lucky to have a prime minister who understood the difference between religion and spirituality i guess one indian degree in natural science helped us a great deal his vision was unparalleled and he created an atmosphere in the country where science could bloom a journal published in 2020 mentioned nehru believed that science alone could solve the problems of hunger and poverty and uplift the masses from illiteracy and superstition the advent of indian institute of technologies and regional engineering colleges along with some top class central universities made sure that a small yet remarkably talented population of india were provided with resources to achieve their scientific potential and a platform was created in 1962 where nehru established incospar as per the suggestion by dr vikram sarabhai a partial thanks also goes to the cold war between russia and usa where space research looked the next big thing in 1960s incospar became isro in 1969 and in 1972 it became a government institution the approach of non alignment by nehru in politics became a boon in science India was helped by NASA in setting up a rocket launching station in Tumba in 1963 and at the same time it was helped by Soviet space agency in launching its first satellite Aryabhatta in 1975 India might be the only country which had reaped benefits from USA and USSR while our neighbor was busy in doubling the investments in defense sector and neglecting their space research India managed to hang on to the small yet consistent budget for years to come not only that the educational institutions started developing formidable enthusiasts who became the backbone of space research in the country by 1970s and 1980s as we look back into the history of our country nehru's role as the first prime minister is pivotal in shaping up the position that we stand in today but does it mean that the credit of this humongous success be attributed only to nehru a simple answer no the successive governments were crucial in bringing the present glory to this great nation and there is one more important contributor to this success it is nothing but the way of life the culture of this great land
In India's long scientific history, hidden gems of ancient scholars and their groundbreaking contributions shine through. Bhaskara to Varaha Mihira, Shushruta and the list goes on and on. Let us talk about Varaha Mihira, the 6th century astrologer and polymath for instance. Varaha Mihira gave a brief explanation of theories for the formation of this universe in his book Brihat Samhita. It wasn't a shallow god created the universe one that we find in every other religious book. In one sloka he writes, Sage Kapila declared Pradhana to be the material cause of the universe, while Sage Kanada, who was the founder of the atomic theory relating to the origin of the universe, has described the Dravyas, the nine substances, as material cause. Now, after this, it gets even more interesting. A person in 580 wrote this. Just remember. Some have opined that the time is the cause of the universe. There are others who say that the universe was produced and is sustained by the natural and necessary action of substances according to their inherent properties. Lastly, there are people who state that the actions, good or bad, of the beings are the cause of the universe. From this sloka, we can understand there was an existence of harmony in this great land centuries ago, even in their disagreements. There were different schools of thought and all of them were well respected. Yet, despite these monumental achievements, a significant question arises. Why did these scientific treasures remain largely within Indian shores? Part of the answer lies in the traditional method of knowledge transmission in ancient India, the oral tradition. This personalized verbal instruction, while effective for local knowledge preservation, limited wider dissemination of knowledge. Furthermore, the cultural approach to knowledge in ancient India played a crucial role as well. Knowledge was not just for practical application but was seen as a path to self-realization and enlightenment. This introspective nature of knowledge pursuit, while enriching within, often did not translate to external communications. As time progressed, these intrinsic methods and attitudes towards knowledge faced challenges, especially during the colonial era. The British colonial powers, in their attempt to undermine and appropriate Indian knowledge, further hindered its global recognition and dissemination. Fast forward to the modern era and we find India at a crossroad. The need to transition from internalization to externalization of knowledge became evident. This is where the role of a transformative leader becomes pivotal. Although the culture of the land encourages research, it somehow was not great at communication. We needed someone who could communicate and act as a bridge between hard work and success on one end and pride and glory on the other end. Prime Minister Narendra Modi emerges as a key figure in this narrative. His leadership marks a significant shift in how India communicates and shares its scientific and cultural heritage with the world. Modi's emphasis on digital initiatives and global outreach has been instrumental in rebranding India from a land of ancient wisdom to a modern innovator and scientific leader. While I was watching the live event, looking at the Prime Minister, taking time off from the BRICS summit and applauding the scientists, I was trying to think of such visual previously. I still remember the PM of India consoling ISRO chief when Chandrayaan-2 was unable to launch the payload. I couldn't help but think of impression that these visuals have had or will have on millions of young minds in the future. You see the Prime Minister with celebrities ranging from cricketers to movie actors to businessmen every day and the next person you see him hugging and consoling is a scientist? I believe the PM is not just creating a brand for himself. 
just by standing there in a video call and applauding the triumph of the scientists he has already inspired millions of minds to pursue research but does this mean the entire credit goes to modi again a big fat no so many people in the past and present played a crucial role in achieving this great feat this success as rightly pointed out by the prime minister in his speech is not just a success of this country but also the success of humanity it made us look back into the moon once again and the race for space research has picked up pace yet again in 2020s space research will be the next big thing again and now the reason is not the fierce competition between arch rivals but the competitive spirit enraged by the underdog performing well and getting an oscar in movie terms winning a defining majority in political terms and finally hitting it out of the park in cricketing terms so sapiens let the obsession in science continue not for a job run but for a simple fun hope you liked our video thanks for watching the video if you liked our video please do like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe for more such interesting videos thank you